Hi guys, Keitha here, the owner of Successful Solutions, but also I have a community of Zoho users called Successful Community. But within that community, a member brought to my attention, thank you for that, that I do not have any videos on blueprints. So that is what we're gonna cover today. I am gonna show you how to create a blueprint, but before I get started, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. A blueprint is used to guide the user through actions that should be taken within a process of statuses or stages. Um, it's really good for restricting the options that should be available within each stage or status. Um, so we're going to use, um, I'm going to show you how to create a lead nurturing blueprint for your leads that are coming into your system from all of your lead generation magnets. And we're going to, you know, set up a series of um, options within the blueprint. All right. Let's start by reviewing our lead statuses to make sure that all of the statuses that we would need within our blueprint are in the leads module. Um, so we're going to go to the back end and just check all of the statuses that are there and make, you know, some uh, some changes here. So. We're going to go to, uh-oh, let's go to lead status, edit properties, and here's what we have. By default, most of these are there by default, um, not contacted, attempted to contact. I've added two, which are sent estimate and estimate accepted. I have a workflow in place that will convert the lead over to an account contact and deal once the lead status has been changed to estimate accepted. So you may notice that within the process, that's something that I added. Um, just note that not qualified, the status not qualified cannot be deleted. You can change the name of it, but it can't be deleted. Otherwise, go in and um, arrange these in the way that you would want. Uh, make sure everything that you have or need in your process is there. That's the first step. Let's start building our blueprint. We're going to go to settings. Under process management, you'll see blueprint. And we're going to build one just like this. It's called lead nurturing process. And here's how it looks once it's done. Okay. And I'm going to explain what's going on here as we walk through it. So we're going to create blueprint. I'm going to call it lead nurturing. It is going to be for the leads module. You can do this for any module that has some type of stage or status. And then there's only one layout. The field is going to be lead status. This is where you choose that stage or status. Um, we don't have any certain criteria. We want every single lead to, um, we want this blueprint to be applied to every single lead. So if you don't, then you would, you know, set your criteria. All right, now here's our blank canvas. We're going to start with not contacted. In my system, this is the default. Whenever a lead is added, the lead status is automatically set to not contacted. Okay. And so what we're going to do is name this transition. This is a transition. This is what you will see as you move through the options. Okay, these are the transitions here. This state here is whatever the status or the stage is. Okay, so not contacted is the lead status. And we're going to put a transition called gather info. Okay. All right, um, so initially we want to gather info. Well, we have two options that we want to be available from there. Attempted to contact, basically, if they try to contact them and they do not get an answer, we want to attempt again. So what we're gonna do is we're going to connect this to this. So not contacted to attempted to contact, and we're gonna name this transition no answer. So when we are going through the options, we will see either established contact or no answer. 
We're about to create this one, but we just created no answer. Okay. The other stage or status contact it. I'm going to put it down here because it's going to have a lot that comes from it and we're going to connect these two because again when it's on the not contacted lead status we want to see no answer and we want to see established contact. So we contacted them and they answered. Okay. All right. That will look like this. So now we want lots of options from here, from contacted. We want lots of options. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and create kind of like a loop that will allow us to attempt or yeah, attempt to contact them again and then say whether or not it was contacted or they were contacted. So we're going to create a connection here. And we're going to call this reattempt. So if they do not answer, we want to reattempt and take it back. Okay. All right. Now from here, we're going to add about five other statuses. The first one we want is not interested or the lost lead. If they are not interested, we want to just say, okay, we've lost that lead. Going to bring that one off to the side here, and the transition will be not interested. The other option is not qualified. If they are not qualified for your product or service, we want to mark them as not qualified. The other option we want to see is since an estimate. Let's say you contacted them and they agreed for you to send them an estimate. We want to put sent estimate as the transition. Okay. Um, then we also want to put contact in future because sometimes people say, hey, contact me later this week for example so we're going to add that option here and we're going to call it contact later all right and then the last one is is a uh, junk lead let's just say that it's a you know it's bad information and you can't um, do anything with it or, you know for whatever reason now that can come off of contacted which if if it's a if you know up front you have wrong information then it more so should come off of not contacted but what we'll do is we'll make it available to both but here we're going to name this bad lead all right doing good so far so we're gonna move this up a little bit because we have one more that we want to add which is estimate accepted and we're going to name the transition the same there we go now I'm going to teach you about common transitions which are available from more than one status uh, for example uh, we want this transition to be available if you've sent them the estimate and they're not interested because right now the way that things are once you send the estimate the only option they will see after that is estimate accepted well what if they're not interested we want to have that option available for the user as well so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this and here where it says common transition we're going to click on that and it's initially going to include every single status or stage, but we don't want that. We want this to be available from sent estimate. So we're going to just click that one. You'll notice that now there's a C here, which means it's a common transition. 
Another transition that we want is for no answer. We want this to be available if they chose to be contacted in the future. So I'm going to click on that. Awesome. Also, established contact. I want to see that from contact in future as well. Also, from no answer or attempted to contact. Okay, so those are all of the common transitions we're going to set up in this uh, demo. Now I'm going to show you that you can prompt the user to do certain things throughout this blueprint as well. So once they've established contact, if you are requiring them to enter notes, for example, then you can check this box here. So this is before, during, and after. So during that transition, you can make the notes mandatory. You can make attachments mandatory or tags, okay? But we're gonna just check this and then just know after Let's say once someone has been contacted, there's a certain email you want them to receive. You can put an email notification. You can create a task for your users, um, set up a meeting call. All of these are options that you can do, you know, within that particular blueprint um, option. All right, so last you would cl click on publish to publish your um, blueprint. And we're just going to go with the one that's already created here. I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like. So we're on a lead, Sarah Smith here, and we can see these are the two transitions. Let's just say that she didn't answer. Now this particular one may have some um, required fields to add and things like that. We'll just ignore those for this. And so now we see the state is attempted to contact. She didn't answer. The next time we try, we're going to either reattempt or we'll say, okay, we've established contact. Let's just pretend like we established contact this time. If you would like, again, you can force notes and things like that for your user to read through or to, you know, choose options. But otherwise, we click there and now the status says it's, you know, they've been contacted and we have these other options. So either they are not qualified, it's a bad lead. Uh, they want to be contacted later, they're not interested, or we're sending an estimate. Once we click on send estimate, this is forcing a note. And so then we have these two options. Either they accepted the estimate or they're not interested. So again, a blueprint can be used to kind of guide the user makes it easier for training instead of having to train them on which options they should choose within each stage or status, you're basically giving them the options, makes it a lot easier and user friendly. All right, get the support that you need by joining the community, SuccessfulSolutions.com slash connect. That space is designed to guide you through the steps to evolve your business. All right, guys, until next time.